Welcome to lesson 2.4, use postulates and diagrams. So again, we already looked at postulates a few lessons ago, and a postulate is one of those statements that we accept as true or as proven, or without needing the proven statements or the proof behind it. So we just accept our postulates as true and we use them to build off of in geometry. So a review of four postulates that we looked at in chapter one. Our first postulate was the ruler postulate, and a reminder that's on page nine, and it's the one that can be summarized as saying points can be assigned a coordinate and a distance between them. Then we have the segment addition postulate, which was on page 10. And that's the one that can be simplified down to be saying if B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. <clears throat> then we have the protractor postulate, which said angle AOB is the absolute value of the difference of ray OA and ray OB. In other words, that's what gives us the ability to use a protractor to measure angles. Because the absolute value of the difference is what becomes the degrees of the angle measurement. And we're measuring between the two rays or the sides of the angle. And then our last postulate from chapter one that we're reviewing was the angle addition postulate. And that's the one that says the measure of angle RST equals the measure of angle RSP plus the measure of angle PST. So in other words, that's one where if we had two adjacent smaller angles added together, they would make that larger angle. And now we get all of our new postulates that we'll be exploring. So postulate five simply states through any two points, there exists exactly one line. So through any two points, there exists exactly one line. Postulate six, a line contains at least two points. Postulate seven, if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. Postulate eight, through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. So if we have three non-collinear points, three points not in a line, there exists exactly one plane through those three points. And then postulate nine is just stating that in another way, a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. Postulate 10, if two points lie in a plane, then the line containing them lies in that same plane. In postulate 11, if two planes intersect, then they intersect at a line. So these are all of our new postulates, 5 through 11. So example one is asking which postulate is represented by the statements or the images. So we're looking at the statements or the images and providing which postulate they're representing. So part A, if any two points are considered, there is exactly one line through the points. So that's just another way to say postulate five through any two points, there is exactly one line. In B, if a plane is considered, so if we're thinking about a plane, then the plane contains at least three non-collinear points. 
So that's a representation or a statement that shows postulate nine. And C. Now it's giving us images in the form of an if then statement, but again with images. So what I see here is two points in a plane. So if there's two points in a plane, then, and what's new is the line through the two points. So now I have a line in that plane. So that's a visual representation of postulate 10. If two points are in a plane, then the line containing them is in the plane. And that line is containing our two points. In D, if I have three points that are non-collinear, then those three points lie in a plane. And that is postulate eight. And then we get to example two. Example two says use the diagram to write an example of the postulate. So postulate five based on this diagram. So postulate five is the one that states through any two points, there is exactly one line. So we could say using this diagram, points A and B are connected by exactly one line, which in this case is line Q. In part B, they're asking us to use postulate six. So postulate six states through any or any line contains at least two points. So we would say line Q contains points A and B. And then postulate seven says that if two lines intersect, they intersect at a point. So in this diagram, we have lines P and Q intersecting at point A. So we would say lines Q and P intersect at point A. <clears throat> then example three. Can the statement be assumed to be true from the diagram? So looking at this diagram, can we assume if some of these are true based on what we see? Now again, remember to make that conclusion of certain things, we would need some labels, some measurements, or for example, if we were going to say right angles, we would need to see the 90 degree or right angle symbol. If I was going to say things are congruent, I would need to see like segment CF and FA, I would need to see the hash mark to show they're congruent. But there are some things that we can assume are true. Like if they show two points that are on a line, then we can assume points B and E are on the same line. So A says B, C, and D are collinear. Well, B, C, and D, it looks like they could be connected with a line, but because they didn't draw the line for us, we cannot assume that they are on the same line. In part B, it says line AC is perpendicular to line BE. So perpendicular meaning intersecting at 90 degrees. It looks like a right angle, but they did not give us a measurement or right angle symbol. So we cannot assume that's a 90 degree or perpendicular. Angle CFE and angle AFE are a linear pair. So looking at CFE, this one right here, and AFE, this angle right here, those two together make the line CA. They're adjacent angles, so by definition, they're a linear pair. So yes, we can assume that's a linear pair because those two together in the image make the flat line. And then angle CFE is congruent to angle AFE. So CFE, this angle up here, and AFE, this angle over here. So CFE and AFE. 
can we say that they are congruent? And actually, this answer should be a no. So the yes here should not be a yes. We would get rid of that because CFE is this angle here. AFE is this angle here. We know they make a linear pair, but without seeing a 90 degree angle on each of these, so a the little square in the corner, 90 degree angles, or given a measurement, we would not know that they're congruent. Now, if the said CFE is congruent to angle AF, B, so if that was a B and not an E, then our answer would be yes, because CFE right here and AFB right here are vertical angles. And by definition, vertical angles are congruent. So in images, if things meet definitions, we can assume they're true without being given measurements or labels. But otherwise, we need our measurements and labels or extra things drawn. And then we can move down to our final ideas for this lesson. <clears throat> and in this case, we have a line perpendicular to a plane. And that is, the line intersects the plane in a point and is perpendicular to every line in the plane that intersects it at that point. So for a line to be perpendicular to a plane, it intersects the plane at a single point, and then it's perpendicular to every line on the plane that intersects through that point. So... In example four, they wanted us to sketch a diagram. So diagram that line PQ is perpendicular to plane A. So I drew a parallelogram type plane, labeled it A, and then line PQ is perpendicular, so it meets that plane at 90 degrees. And if I were to draw other lines on that plane, they would all intersect this angle, or this line, at a 90 degree angle. So we can see it passing down through the plane, represented by the dash line, going down to point Q. And it intersects the plane at a single point and at 90 degrees. Then we can have just a line intersecting a point that's not perpendicular. So in this case, line RS intersects plane B at point T. But it doesn't say it has to be perpendicular, it just simply intersects so passes through. So in this case, line RS passing through plane B at point T. And then our final example for this lesson, example five. Can the statements be assumed true from the diagram explain? So now I see in this diagram, at least I have a 90 degree angle here. And I have many different points and a couple plane labels. So in this case, part A says line EF is perpendicular to plane S. So line EF... And plane S, this horizontal plane, meet at 90 degrees at point C. So they gave us the right angle symbol. So yes, we can say they are perpendicular. Meaning that yes, we can assume that as well. In B, we have points D, C, and H are collinear. D, C, and H do not have a line drawn through them. So, without a line connecting the three points, we cannot say they're collinear. In C, it says line EF is perpendicular to line CH. Well, EF is going and intersecting plane S at 90 degrees, and line CH 
if it was there, so because there's two points, we know they can be connected with a line, line CH, if it was drawn, would be on plane S. And we know because the line is perpendicular to the plane, it's also perpendicular to any lines on that plane. So in this case, EF would be perpendicular to all the lines on plane S, which would include line CH. And then part D, line EF intersects plane S at point C. So line EF passes through plane S at point C. We can see that on the diagram, so we assume it is true. So our main idea for today's lesson is going back to the four postulates from chapter one and our new postulates, and then using those to start to prove statements based on diagrams or see what we can create based on the postulates.